Hey, trading friends, how are you, man? Long time no speak. Uh, September 4th, 2021. It's been quite some time since I put a video up on here, so I'm glad to be back. Hope you guys are doing well, trading well. The market's been fantastic for trading. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Real quick, let's look at the spies here, the S&P 500 ETF. You'll see the weekly chart pretty much tells it all. I mean, talk about steady march higher. Let me just brag this out here. You can see the moving average here when it crossed over. It's been pretty much on a steady move. Look at this from about October, November of 2020. It's pretty much stayed equidistant from the 20 period moving average all the way up till now. I mean, you can see it just kind of hugs that 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 little delta there. And there's been what, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six attempts to come lower and never been able to breach that 20 period moving average. That doesn't mean it's not coming. In fact, the longer this goes, the higher the chances ultimately of more of a breach of that line as well as a trend change. But right now, like I've been saying for months on end, you got to just stand alongside people. It's, it's really not that hard. Just stand alongside. Obviously, you can play your shorts. I'll do shorts uh, a lot during the intraday. Um, but in general, the trend is still up. I know it's long in the tooth and people are tripping about it and worried and wringing their hands. But until you get the signs from the market, the, the candlesticks, the charts, Stay, well, I find that you stay with the trend and the trend's still up. It is getting long in the tooth though. So obviously, you know, if, as you buy fourth and fifth stage breakouts, make sure your share sizes are maybe a little bit smaller than you're used to um, or than your normal plan calls for um, to err on the side of caution. Okay. Uh, so anyway, cues here are very similar. You'll see it's a little bit more, um, more uh, of a pullback here to the moving averages. All right. So I had to take that call real quick, but this uh, same thing, really same cues, but a little bit more, hiccups in the trend up here you'll see on the weekly chart um let's take a look there you'll see the same thing right actually right here in uh, october november of 2020 it's been moving up here pretty steady gets about this sort of distance here from the 20 period moving average which is where it's at now and then it kind of hugs it or pulls back a little bit so we get a pullback if this pattern continues um it could get explosive and go higher uh, anything can happen, as you know, in the market. So that's why you have to have a plan. You have to have a, a entry method, an exit method, um, a way to manage your trades objectively. Because if you're just flying by the seat of your pants, you can get lucky and you can make money even in a year, two years. But that trade that's going to destroy you has your name on it if you don't have a set way to do this and you're just gambling and you're um, using soft um, techniques, if you will. So just my unsolicited advice to you all. Let's pop into my scans here. We've got some really good ideas. And I'm actually going to actually spend some time on, on the cryptos because um, I was telling friends of mine here uh, in Colorado about the setups that were happening about a month ago. And I'll kind of show you those. And um, we've all been kind of, you know, buying into it. It's been a great profitable run. Nice percentage gains in the matter of a month, month and a half. And um, I think things are setting up to even go higher here. So we'll talk about some of my favorite ones. I scanned the whole crypto universe that I have uh, and came up with really a top five or six. Um, some that are going to be well known, some that are not so well known that I'll share with you here in this video. Um, so let's get right into it. You'll see here on my charts, this is my standard uh, uh, platform in TradeStation for my laptop. So this is my trading computer. This is actually my scanning computer and my off-market computer. Um, but you'll see here the daily chart here, uh, 60 minute, and then we got the weekly here, which has got the light blue background. So it's kind of different it's for day trading, daily, 60, 15, and five on the lower right. And then we got a minder here with a bunch of stock symbols. And then the monthly is actually behind this one, this minder here. So you can see here, if I pull this down, you'll see the monthly chart there. And you'll see here on the cues, right? Pretty equidistant from the moving average here um, after this, this shakeout here, which was the beginning of COVID, which is shook people off the tree and then just drilled higher and then drilled higher and is continuing to move higher. Um, and uh, we all know things don't go on forever uh, in one direction. So eventually there will be a pullback more significant. We've had pullbacks here, nothing real significant yet. We'll probably get something more significant at some point, but until, like I said, until the chart starts indicating that's going to be more likely to happen, which I don't see that right now. Um, stay with the trend, man. The trend is your friend. I know it's a really annoying, um, saying that people have, but it, it, it actually rings true. All right, let's bang through some of these. Myrna, Moderna here. Um, you'll see Moderna, I actually bought some on the shake here. You'll see this, this is the daily chart of the Moderna. It, it broke out, it's been very strong, came down, took out the moving average, popped up, made a higher low. And then when it came down here on this day and it broke below this low, but held this low, okay, and showed some support, I nibbled. I bought a half a position. 
uh, and then it's been riding up here. And now, if you look at it, it's getting ready to break out on the weekly chart. In fact, it basically did by a few, about a dollar on Friday. But here's the problem with entering the trade right now at 416. Where I got in here in the 360s, 370s, uh, was a was a good um, aggressive entry in that there really was no setup other than a, than I was anticipating a failed breakdown off the pivot takeout here on the daily chart and the and the previous pivot hold. And I thought well, for this for this sort of risk here with the possible reward, it's worthwhile. Now, say you get in, say say Monday we get up and it opens at 417, and technically it's triggering as a long. Where's your stop going to be? Well, your stop's going to be at least three, the, the low of this candle here, at least, right? It's where it's got, I mean, I guess you could use the candle like on Friday, the bottom of that candle, but the pivot is down here. So let's just say that's about a $40, $50 stop. Well, where's your first target? Previous highs. And guess what? That's about $40, $50 away. So you're, you're risking one to get one. It makes it not as, as sexy as, of, a, of a proposition to me. Um, so why I'm throwing this out here is watch it. If it can sit in base, give you something tighter from a stop perspective, maybe a few days. Uh, you know, I would be surprised if this thing went ballistic up here, and that's fine. I got my half a position. I'll ride it out, and I'll take some profits if it gets up to this, this uh, previous high here, which was around four. I want to say what was it? Four, uh, four nine, almost five hundred dollars a share. Okay, uh, but Moderna looks hot here to watch closely. It's basically triggering. Triggering reward risk is, is is risky. If you can find a tighter stop, if you want to drill down to the 60-minute chart and say, okay, the pivot here are 390, um, you're still looking at a, what, 10, 25 dollar stop. If you use the low from Friday, 25, 30 dollar stop, say with slippage. Um, so you need 60 bucks on the return. And I mean, 420 to 60 is 480, 497. It's two to one, two and a half to one. Still not great, but better. Okay, so. To your plan, follow it, but I like it. I like what I'm seeing here. Uh, I'm in it in a half lot um, and looking to add the position when and if. The, I'm not buying a 417 and putting this out at 390 uh, tomorrow on Monday. Um, but I will be watching it, and I will day trade the crap out of this thing. Day trading this thing. This breakout here late day and Friday, what a moneymaker. Entry rear here around 402, stop around 398. Boom, right past the pivot. Target was 412. And there's a day trade right there. Gorgeous. Right here. You can see it here on the 15 minute chart. Look at it. Beautiful. Right there. Cup, handle, dropping volume. Buy the crap out of it right there. Target 410, 415. Hit both of them swimmingly. It actually gave you another entry here on the five. Okay. So there's your lesson today on the day trading, drilling down from the daily chart to the swing trading to the day trade on the 15 and the five. Absolutely gorgeous. These are a lot of the ones I'm watching as swing trades. So you can see my minder here. I usually don't show my minder, but this minder has everything I'm kind of looking at. So take a, take a look at DocuSign. Look at the weekly chart. Coming up here, we've got a flag setting up. It's basically almost broke out here on um, Friday. Look at the volume. Okay, look at the flag here on the 60-minute chart. I like what I'm seeing. So it's an X-ray on a swing, multi-day trade. You can look to trade this flag. Break of about 313, 314, stop around 306, 305, maybe if you want to get room, 307, that area there. Look for the flag move and a measured move off this. So 290 to 310 gives you $20 off the 307, 327 maybe on a break past this previous high here. DocuSign's worth watching. It's on my list. These are all the ones on my list. So if you want to stop the video, you can even write these down. These are all what I'm watching. Some are more exotic than others. Um, PPLT. This one's been moving down quite a bit. It's one I own forever. I sold out when it broke down, made nice profits on it. Now I'm starting to leg back into this thing. I like this look at this inverse head and shoulders here on the daily chart. The neckline's right above here. And look, it, it, it coincides with a break above these four weekly, this month long candle, right? These four weeks. If it breaks above 96, you got to stop at 90 and you're looking for a move back up to the 120 mark. Um, PPLT on the ICOT reports is showing um, big buyers are moving back into platinum now. So I'm interested. PPLT 96 stop 90 is what I'm looking at. Um, some of these are extended. NVIDIA, you're getting a little bit of a flag here. right? It's extended up on the weekly, but this thing is strong. It's on a train. It's got rising moving averages. Um, I like the, in, in a sense, it's consolidated for five days. Watch it for an entry on NVIDIA to the top side. This one here is too extended, GLOB. I mean, look, there's no entry. Uh, it's just straight up. But I put it on here because guess what? We get a nice five-day pullback, three-day pullback. You know, say it pulls back nicely, sets up a drain-out play. You know, the moving average, I may get on it. So I want to put it on here, even though right now I have no pattern, nothing to set me up on this thing right now as a buy. Um, but it's clearly strong, right? CrowdStrike's another one. 
broke out, pulled back to the previous breakout point here. You can see the high, right? Minor support. It's holding right now, popping in here about 278 to 280 with the stop right under this low, which is 269, okay? Which is uh, minor support is doable. Watch it, okay? It is whippy. You can see it whips right around here. It takes out pivots. Pyre pivot, tornadic formation, expanding lows, expanding highs is actually what's happening here, okay? But now it's making a higher low. Can it hold? I don't know, but to me it's worth a look. 280, stop 268, $12 stop. Uh, reward to risk to the previous high is not good, but you're anticipating since it's breaking out to new highs that this thing's going to roll higher. Let's take a look at a few. This was the one of the exotics DXC. Um, you'll see a couple of major shakeout, 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 massive volume on the third one. Third time could be a charm. I don't know. It aligns with the rising moving averages on the weekly chart. Now, we are on a 200-day, okay, so it's coming off the lows. But I like the shake and bake here. And it's a proposition. Maybe a half position over 36, stop under 33, under this bottoming tail. Or if you want to keep it tighter, 34.50, 36.34.50. Look for it to slingshot back up. Try to re continue this uptrend that's, that's forming here on the weekly, where you got rolling uh, 20s and 40 period moving averages rolling higher, creeping on that 200. Um, and looking like it wants to go higher. Really nice close, too, at the end of the day on DXC. See on the drug names here, Dr Johnson & Johnson. Nice pullback on a daily, setting up here. It, it basically triggered. Now, I did not, actually, I missed this. I didn't buy it. I could have bought it here about 174.50. It's really right in the same range, right? It's really right at that 175 range. So if you like it, you got a pullback, rising moving average. you got a clear up trend here on the weekly, clear up trend on a daily. You've got your pullback. I mean, no better time than now to get on this thing other than the fact that it is mature in its move up. Okay, so keep that in mind. Your stop's here. But I'm watching Johnson Johnson. I'm not in this. I want to see how it behaves on Tuesday, not Monday. Monday's a Labor Day. So Tuesday, we'll see what happens when we come back to the markets on Johnson & Johnson. Uh, Medtronic's another one very strong. New highs. You can see the flag forming. It technically broke out and stalled here. So it's hanging here. It's right in a buy range at 134.63. Your stop's about 131 to 132 underneath these lows. Uh, and at minor support, okay, but Medtronic's trending up and looking higher. Lows, here's another one. Um, it's come back here. You got a one, two, three, four possible continuation pattern. You got a big green bar on volume, boom, lower volume. Bar is kind of like a base, two bar base. You can see here's a five bar wide base. It's kind of it had a shakeout here, rising moving average, rising moving average. Lows on a breakout above these highs is interesting. So it's 209.50 on the entry area. 201 on the stop on lows. Pfizer is with the Johnson Johnson, same type of deal, right? Moved up precipitously, double top, came down, shake out tail, setting up here. You can look for, you can see it's still extended here quite a bit on the weekly. So it may do my double tap setup from Zombie Land where it hits, takes it out again. On the second downturn is when you look to get on this thing when it, when it normalizes closer to the rising 20 period moving average. So watch Pfizer here. If you like it here, you can just stop it there, look for the double tap. See if you can get on there if it comes up. BYM, this this one I've owned for a while. I sold out of it. I actually got out of it over here, took my profits, and now it's setting up again. You've got a, a, a pretty much a cup here. It's handling here nicely. Volume's pretty low. Breakout over the highs around 109.50, 110. Stop underneath the low of the base here. Watch BYM for higher prices if it sets up for you and triggers. Now here's one that's kind of came out of nowhere. Victoria's Secret. IPO, look at the move here, and look at this giant flag wedge forming here. It's gorgeous, pretty, right? Um, watch this. Now, it's a new issue. It's it's volatile, but, I mean, we're paying $5 range. You can look to buy this thing, you know, in the, in the 70 area. If it breaks out of this this down this little lower high downtrend around $70, and your stop is a nice squared off base around $64, 63 to $64 a share. Victoria's Secret, um, look to get up on that uh, on that stock if it sets up nice for you um, a couple more I want to share with you and then we'll go look at the, the uh, cryptos real quick um, where's the one I want to talk to you guys about oh the, the meme stocks AMC and GME let's look at those all right AMC here you'll see again really big move obviously this has been in if you've been around trading you'll know that this has been talked about well and, and I don't really care about that I don't really care about the fundamentals that much with these companies It's more basically off the charts and right now You've got a pullback, you've got it settled in here, it held the 30 area, and it's kind of giving you a little bit of a flag, a little low cup and handle. Um, volume's dropping off. I think a solid break here, about 48 or so. 
stop in a 40, so it's a pretty decent sized stop. Now you can go down to the single candles, you can say 45 entry stop, 42, $3 stop, but the chances you're getting clipped are a lot higher, obviously, with the tighter stop here on this animal. But uh, man, she can roll, okay? So watch AMC for an entry. That's definitely a leaning long on that one in GameStop. Very similar here. You got a flag here. The flag actually broke out, but now it's come right back down. So stop area is right in here. 200, 202 entry, stop 192 if you're bold. But if the flag fails, you may want to just wait. See if it takes out that 192 spot first off the rising moving average. If it can hold serve there, that's maybe where I want to get in on the failed flag setup, but continuation because everything else supports this thing going higher from a chart perspective to me on the weekly and daily anyway. Definitely supports going higher. Um, if I were to bet, this thing's going higher. But a lot of times what it'll do is it'll shake the tree. The flag here is very clear. It hit, okay, and now it hasn't stopped out yet, but it's creeping toward that stop. So what I'll do is I'll watch and see when it takes out the stop. What, what Then what happens? Does it collapse, right, or does it hold serve? Um, just as a, a lesson here, since I'm thinking of a very similar type of thing, Roku. Roku here, um, beautiful, like, setup here, pullback, right? on the uh, weekly chart off this double top and plenty of room to come back up. I mean, even if you're looking at a 50% retracement back up, I mean, this thing could probably hit 400 fairly easily. Look at this. Now, let me back this chart off for you. See what happens. The, 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 um, the absolute um, head fake that's done here by this thing. So here we go. You get a little red bar volume. Then you get a giant green bar volume. This is very bullish, right? Tooks out the high, very bullish, solid green bars. Like, okay think we're going to go higher. I think we're going to go back up here and move. Now watch. The next candle, it gaps up, gaps up right here, gaps up and just engulfs and gets slammed and takes out all of the buyers here. Everyone here, everyone who bought in here is a loser at the end of this day. Okay? Well, not a loser. That's kind of harsh. But in a position that is underwater, not that that's a big deal, right? I, you always have positions that are underwater in, in, in my, until it hits your stop. But if you had your stop here below these lows, then you got taken out in this one day, right after this green bar. Okay, and then what happens? Then we gap down the next day, Friday, and I actually was leaning long on this and took it long right here for a scalp to the top side on the five-minute chart. Okay, off the fake lower here, right, taking it for a gap fill. Now, it didn't fill the gap, but it's still a handsome little producer. I mean, I think moved $10 plus off that pivot. Um, so I love trading this thing uh, as a day trade. Roku, watch it. But now from a swing trading perspective, it's now taken out this, anyone who was short, it took them out here on this green bar. And then anyone who was long, if you had stops and you honored them, you got taken out that next day. If not on this day, then on this day, right? So now what? Well, I think it's going to be dynamic. So if you're a day trader, keep it around. Keep it on radar. Throw it up on one of your charts, your micro charts, so you can trade it. I know I am. Um, but from a swing trading perspective, I might enter this long uh, at this point. Uh, not right away but when and if i get a set i want to see how it behaves now now that it's taken off both pivots that's the tornadic formation expand lower lows higher highs now i want to see what it does here in the middle if it can get back up to the middle range and see if it can set up for me and give me that tornadic setup uh, i'm looking to get on and it may be a short position actually market starts to roll over say it takes four or five days to set up looks like it's going to roll over market starts to roll over you've got room for this thing to come back down especially off this macro double top Okay, with room to move down to 300 or room to move the, the 400 now that we're sitting in this 350 range right here. So a little more detailed lesson on my friend Roku there. New core, um, steel stock. The steel stocks are doing s s quite well. Uh, this one here is the strong one, new core. Look at the trend up here. You've got a flag forming. Technically, you've got it. it it's basically taking out the lower here. So this is your new stop. The low of this candle here, which is actually, uh, it's really close to. Um, I look for it to take that out. You've got minor support here around 110. Um, I want to see it set up in this area here between the moving averages or get closer to this rising 20 here on the weekly chart. But Nucor is nice. And just take a look. These aren't on my list, but the Steel Dynamics, you can see it's strong, but not as strong as Nucor. And you've got X, which also is strong, but not as strong as Nucor. So I think Nucor, if you're going to play in the Steel space, this is the one to be on. Uh, just got to find your entry, but it's setting up. So keep her close eye on it and um, and uh, watch for your setup all right cryptos all right so here is the um, bitrix platform now I'm not logged in right now so it's just showing the charts but you'll see here um, this is ethereum the daily chart of ethereum to US dollars 
um, and you'll see here this beautiful cup and handle. And I was telling again everyone here, 3250 to 3300 area is your buy point on a breakout here. And first target is going to be around 4,000. Well, it hit the target. It gave a $700 return basically in a matter of three, four days. Okay, so the setup was here. You can see it. It came off this low. Now, obviously, off the bottoms here, you could be buying the support at the bottoms. Okay, but that's definitely much more risky. Um, but you can get risky from a perspective of win percentage. You're going to get stopped out a lot as long as you honor your stops because you have to stay safe. You got a minor pivot entry here but it was near resistance, so that made it a little bit less uh, palatable, palatable for me. Then when it came up here and based, boom, on it. Now, again, I, I'm hodling some Ethereum and Bitcoin anyway. Um, so there, there, there's a position in those to me that, uh, and Cardano, that I'm not selling. I was going to keep, you know, forever, pretty much. Well, maybe not forever, but for the uh, time being. Cardano is the strongest. Notice the previous high on Cardano. This one is above it. None of them. I'm repeat. Let me repeat this to you. None of them. Bitcoin, Ethereum, all of and the rest of the ones I'm going to show you are as strong as Cardano on the chart. Now, if you go back to some of my videos in the past, what have I said? I said it's funny to me that relative strength, which to me applies in the equities markets um, quite a bit. It, I'm noticing that it's not as reliable in cryptos. So the fact that I'm telling you this. Um, to me, it makes me want to buy the crap out of Cardano more than the others and increase my exposure to Cardano. However, um, I will say that historically, over the last couple of years of watching the cryptos and being in the crypto space, um, I'm finding that something that's relatively strong can easily become relatively weak. Um, it's not it's not as consistent as it can be with equities uh, with regards to relative strength. So just, that's just my little thing I want to share with you. But right now, from a relative strength perspective, this one, my friends, is the one. This one is showing so much strength. You got a high flag here, breakout over three all-time highs. Uh, look at the volume here on this on this upside move as it took out this like there was nothing, right? Watch for a setup. A breakout over 310 here is viable. Your stop is below the flag around 240. Um, how far can this go? I don't know. I mean, could it be another Bitcoin? Could it be another Ethereum? Or could it be something that just goes, that maybe goes to $10, 12 who knows? I have no idea, right? Um, but... This one looks like it's got the most pro, uh, strength out of all these. So look at Cardano. Let me show you Bitcoin, just because everyone knows Bitcoin. And Bitcoin isn't on my top list right now with regards to relative strength. Bitcoin here, see, here's the previous highs. So you can see this one's lower than it, right? But it's basing nicely. It's not really breaking out like Ethereum, okay? So this one's not on my list to buy right now. It's uh, Ethereum. It's Cardano. I just shared Cardano with you. Let me show you Ethereum. It's going to block this in your brain. Now look at Ethereum. Look at how much clearer the strength is on Ethereum off this breakout, right? And Cardano, okay? All right, so what else am I looking at? Well, ch check out this bad boy. Where's she at here? Where, where is, oh, there she is. Sushi. I never heard of sushi. I mean, other than the food, uh, which actually I had last night, but look at sushi. Moved up here nicely. I mean, it's only been trading for a little while, but it's flagging here now gorgeously. This one could really do well it looks like it's going well and you've got but you got to adhere to your stops okay so it it's setting up here 14 is your entry area you know 1250 is probably your stop area but just keep in mind it's a little bit thinner it's brand new so it's definitely high more much more risky so you've got to figure out what your risk you know to me the more um, established ones cardano bitcoin ethereum or cardano and ethereum especially bitcoin to me is not as as strong as those two um, are going to be your standard ones and where you want to be in. But this is one of more the, the more exotics. It could be an up-and-comer. Watch Sushi. Keep it around. Uh, Wax P is another one that I've never heard of that um, came up on my scans here. Look at this. This is like actually Cardano. This, this and Cardano are the same because they've taken out their previous highs. Well, there it is if I squeeze the daily chart down so you can see it, right? What's this? A giant flag. But is it volatile? Holy crap, yes. Look at this, right? But this can be the sign of much higher prices. So if you are got your really your exotics, right? Your exotics where you're gonna your 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 more gambling money, if you will, this is one of the ones to probably put it into. Okay, look into this one. Wax P. You're looking at 40 to 30 range. Um, you know, the hard stop here, 29, 28, 28 cents. Entry around 40. You can see it's oscillating, lower highs, higher lows. It's wedging here tighter. Could get explosive. Watch Wax P. It's, that's the worth. That's the price of admission for this video, which was free. Um, XTZ, where's she at? 
um, Tezos. This one, see also, not at all, not at all-time highs, but nice flag setting up. Volume picked up here. I like this. I like what I'm seeing here on XTZ. Watch this one as a long. You're looking at about 570 to $6 share uh, entry. Stop about when the whole high fours. Um, XTZ is definitely worth watching. A um, couple more here. Let's look at um, Zill. Oops. Zill. There it is. Another new issue coming up here off this, this pop. You know, it's basically basing here sloppily, breaking out. Watch Zill. This could be a new one that's an up-and-comer um, to have on your list. CeeLo here is also showing some massive volatility. So, again, in your in your gambling, you know, pot of money, look at this day, day it put it in here. I mean, I used to own this way back in the day, and I've been out of it for quite some time. And right now it's it's flagging, but it's it's messy. So it's definitely more of a gambling stake on CeeLo, but it shows that it can put in some serious moves. So um, quick re quick rewards here, but obviously the risk can be higher. Um, last one I want to share with you is, where is it? Hive. There it is. Hive's another one that just broke past all-time highs, just barely off this topping tail. But see, for me, it's hard. This one's lower on the tier because there's no real entry here, right? I mean, obviously, you could exit right down to like a let's go to a let's go to a six-hour chart. Okay, there's the six-hour chart, so you can see here um, the flag forming. So it'll give you something to get on right there. Um, so Hive is worth watching. I think it's one of the strong ones. So share with you guys some of the top ones um, that I'm watching here on the crypto space, and I think I think you know everyone should be if you're a trader and you're an investor and you're looking to um, diversify I think the crypto space is somewhere where you've got to have some of your money but again talk to your financial advisors make sure it's right for you uh, it can be more risky and uh, as you know anything even equities can go to zero so keep all that stuff in mind so anyway um, hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you for tuning in sorry it's been a while since I've posted I'll try to post a little bit more often I get caught up things happen follow me on Twitter I throw ideas out there from time to time when I'm feeling squirrely and I don't feel like sharing stuff during the day um, and then obviously you can communicate with me there or communicate with me uh, by posting on the video comments. Okay. Uh, until next time, guys, trade well, trade safe, follow your plan, make that money.